My special guest today is Doug Smith, ex-NHL hockey star, who while playing with the Los Angeles Kings, ran headfirst into the boards, and it changed his life forever. His spinal cord injury forced him to look at life through a whole new lens. And today, fully recovered, he spends his new life teaching others how to deal with trauma and rebuild their own lives. He's a very down-to-earth storyteller. He pulls no punches. His mission is to help as many people as possible. Well, I certainly uh, enjoy, and it's an honor to, to speak with you. I, I certainly enjoy the, the work that you do, like you, very elegant work. Uh, you remind me of a friend of mine who ran Totem Hill, Mr. Ron Weens. Um, you know, just very detailed when it, when it comes to uh, presentation. So uh, very nice work. Thank you very much. Um, you know, speaking of this event that's coming up, I mean, I, I had heard about you previously and we have not been connected until this event. It's, but you know what? That's how things happen in life, right? You actually get connected to individuals when the timing is right. And, yes. you, and you and I both stepped into the breach for Carolyn and, you know, and said we'd offer our time, you know, for people who are going through some really tumultuous things. And I mean, I then took a really serious look at your background and I went, oh, like, oh my God, like these guys are going through nothing by comparison to what this man did, right? And in his life, I mean. It's easy for, it's easy for us to help. It is. Right? I mean, especially today, it, it has never been easier for us to help. You can't, nobody can see anybody. So, so the, uh, our ability when you have a digital something or a branding something, it, go, it goes through the roof, our ability to help. So why not, why not do that? Because it makes you so healthy, right? Yeah. I was just talking yesterday about the idea of branding yourself. And I think we've always, you know, people have already done that. They just didn't call it that. You know, it used to be your reputation. It's what you did for, for, for a friend. What you, yes. the, last, the last good thing, the last good deed that you did, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's about heroes, too. And so my company is, is very strict about when I meet somebody or an organization, it's about making them, it's about making them the hero. And all the wording associated with, with when you make somebody a hero, make an organization a hero, changes right? Compared to the way that I used to do it. And, and, and so now it's just, you know, ultra giving, digitizing, piling it on and oh, piling on even more, right? Just take something that you can even keep on the shelf if you need it for later. It's okay. Take it, take it. Yeah. Right? And, and I'm going to be doing that for, um, we have a global plan to release uh, thriving in transition to the world. So all your podcast, uh, uh, people who tune into this podcast will receive a free copy of my first book, um, which, which is a best, best-selling story. And, and, and that's going to be sent to all the English countries around the world. I've got great relationships, but I've never done this before. I've never taken a book of mine. I'm self-published. I own the publishing company and, and said, okay, no barriers, no barriers. People want this because it's about transition. It's called thriving in transition, how to turn adversity into the opportunity of a lifetime. Right. At this stage in the game, I wrote it in 2008. Wow. And, and, and so today it's, it, it, it stood the test of time and even more so. So when people get it in their hands, they'll be able to get a leg up. On, on the stuff that we've been suffering from, you know, Be, because I went head first into the boards and, and because I shattered C5 and C6 and because I became a quadriplegic and had to learn how to do everything over again, um, people get to get to take it and, 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 and use the, the sort of the way that I did it because I systematized it. I'm a systems thinker. So I, I took that whole process in 18 journals and, and, and I took a system out of how I recovered because I kept track of everything that I did, and the measuring that, that went on. 
to go from no arms, no legs, no bladder, no bowels, to being able to spin a Frisbee on my finger and skate again. I'm, I'm back to playing weight. I'm, I'm actually two pounds off my playing weight from when I was 18. I weigh 186 pounds. I was drafted at 184 pounds, same height. Wow. wow. Right. And, and, and I, I, I atrophied after the spinal cord injury. Right. I atrophied down to 152 pounds. Okay. Right. And, 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 and it was the second time in my life I had atrophied down because I had a, a head on collision on a motorcycle um, when I was playing with the Buffalo Sabres. And, and in this, uh, you know, I, I, I broke my, sh I broke my shoulder they, and my scapula and had to put a plate and six screws in. And um, it was a month after the season had ended. So it was around this time of year. Um, and, and I was under contract with the Buffalo Sabres. And, and, and I was in a hospital bed, uh, you know, with my arm in a cast. And they said I wouldn't be able to move it till August 1st. And, and that, that was my NHL career gone at, at, at a very young age. But I got out of the cast. Um, the doctor said I'd probably get, never get external rotation back because they had to cut me from my neck all the way to the shoulder, peel the skin back and put a plate and six screws in. From August 1st to August 27th, I put on 25 pounds of muscle. I showed up at training camp. They, they told me that I wasn't fit to play because it was very public. They sent me to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, in, in Minnesota. I passed all the tests. I can't show back up with the Buffalo Sabres. I said, yeah, I, I've won the medical arbitration. You have to play me or trade me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was traded to the Edmonton Oilers the same week Gretzky was traded to the Los Angeles Kings. Why? To oh. start to start that season with the Edmonton Oilers at center ice between Curry and Simpson. Wow. Wayne Gretzky's line. Right. From, from lying in a hospital bed four months earlier, completely broken, completely shattered physically, mentally, everything to facing off and scoring the first goal for the Edmonton Oilers that year. It was a tip. I tipped Yari Curry's shot. Okay, I didn't shoot it. It went off my stick <laughs> or my ass. <laughs> oh, God. So, so that, that's been the, the life. And then, I, you know, I got back to playing professionally for another five years. And then, boom, I, you know, I, I hit the boards and the lights, the, the lights yeah. went out. Yeah. for 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 just a second and um i i survived probably the, the the worst accident anybody could ever imagine some might say you're living on borrowed time <laughs> the game. i'm in a hurry uh, I'm, I'm in a hurry just because you know life is so fragile yeah and i tell people like you might as well be in a hurry like if you find yourself not being in a hurry um then you might not be using your time most effectively, especially your brain, because you, it, your brain will start shutting down and it'll start limiting you. You use it or you right. lose it. Yeah. And, and, and we know that. Like I, I do a lot of work in neuroscience. I, I spend time with seven major universities. And, and, you know, what's happening with the brain? People just don't know what they don't know. That's, that's the problem. And they, don't, they want to ignore the brain because they, they, nobody can see it. So they can hide all the stuff that's in their head. Yeah. And, and, and so there's a, a whole psychology behind being able to relay the information about the brain so it actually goes in and sticks. I love that you're sharing this story because there are people out there that have chosen to sit in the corner and cry about, you know, the fact that they lost their job, you know, you know they've been set aside by this pandemic. I mean, it's, it's the one thing that's happened to the world that leveled the playing field for everyone. And I think you just actually said something about, you know, now's a great time to, to get out and actually build yourself, build your brand, build your recognition because you're in charge, right? Who are you? What are you giving away? Yes. Right? I mean, you, you have to have something to give away because you have to have created something up to this point. If you've been working in a job that you didn't like, you wouldn't have been creating anything because you just would have been showing up and waiting for the data. 
And, and so that's really no longer an option if you want to keep up with the new economy, because there's going to be explosive growth in certain areas and they're really easy to find. But but you have to use a system to find them. You can't just look at the world and go, wow. So so my system marries up next to other systems. It enhances the whole process for the human brain. It's specifically right. designed for the human brain. And it allows you to take this little card that I give everybody that comes to me. And, and, and they keep it with them and they look at it and it's like, don't break the rules. It, if you, if you break the rules, cause it's all about making a better decision, right? Right. If you break the rules, the decision won't be as good. And the cost of making a bad decision is huge. Absolutely. Much greater than the time it takes to make a better decision. Wow. See, and I love it. So yeah, I love the value of that soundbite alone, in all honesty, because that plays out in business, yes. in life, uh, in, in, in just what you're going to do every time you get up in the morning, right? I mean, yes. you know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And people walk into life, they get conditioned because we become what we're around. Yeah. And, and, and they get into trouble and they can't understand their way out yet when they start getting out if they're shown a system that helps the brain there's a cascading effect so it it causes a release of memories we see this at different stages after people use my system because there's thousands of people using it now and we measure a lot yeah, yeah right so there's this weird cascading effect that occurs with with memory once you open up to a better way of of processing trauma of understanding the priorities of your subconscious brain and of the behaviors that feed the priorities. So it's very simple. You look at a behavior that might be causing you problems or that you're not sure of, and you trace it back through the, through the priorities of your subconscious and, and it breaks down the impact of trauma. So it, it's a very simple process that I, that I teach my clients. Every one of my coaching clients, that's the, fir the first month they get like, a thousand dollars worth of digital products in my books just so that they can open up the pathways necessary to, to find their stardom, right? Cause everybody's looking to find their stardom or be a hero at something. And, 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 and so I just help them go from their current reality to their desired future with, with a very systematic approach. And it, it's just, it's very impactful. It, it sometimes I, I, I pinch myself. I wonder why I wasn't doing this when I was 18. Instead of, <laughs> instead of banging my head against the boards. <laughs> I was actually, you know, yeah, I was just thinking of a question before you even explained yourself there. And it was, and it, it really, fe <laughs> really feeds because I, 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 because, you know, what's wrong with us as people that, you know, that we don't look after ourselves until it's almost too late. Like what the yes. hell are we doing to ourselves? Yes. Yes, exactly. We, we, we let it go. We wait, we don't take action. Um, and, and it, and it causes us so much, uh, so much grief. Right. Yeah. And, and so getting into action and progress, you know, the, the human body, the human brain loves that. And, and you know what the brain likes the most, it likes working on projects that help the brain. So the brain has this incredible uh, capacity to understand itself. And, and as a result, it makes itself healthier by a better, by a better understanding. <laughs> it's, a really cool loop. it's a really cool loop. I mean, it's, it's not easy work, right? I, I started writing in 2008. I sat for two years and wrote the first book by myself, by my own hand. Wow. Right. And, and, and then two years later, I decided the science came to me. And, and said, let's write a book uh, on, on trauma and the science. So I wrote a book on how trauma works from my perspective and my story, and we married the science to it. So now we have the story and the science. And, and then two years later, I developed a solution, which is the systematic approach to solve the problem. Right. And it scares people. Boy, it gives some people concussions without even touching them. Be, be, because there's a lot of people out there that don't want you to know what this is and how they work. That's true. Um, there, I mean, there's a business somewhere in behind there sometimes that is stopping yes. the truth from coming out. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and here it is. Here, here's the secret. I show every one of my clients and it's really simple. 
uh, Dr. Northoff, okay? Dr. Northoff wrote two books. He's a psychiatrist and he signed both of them to me. And this was years ago as I was writing, but it's so crystal clear today that, you know, here, here's the brain. Uh, it's called unlocking the brain and it's called coding, right? That's volume okay. one and it's linear. See that? Yeah. Linear. Okay. So that's what happens first in the brain. And then uh, the thicker one, it's twice yes. as thick. Consciousness. Mm. Consciousness comes second. And there's a gap in between coding and consciousness. So that means that the environment around the human brain is more critical than the brain itself. So what you surround yourself with from a psychiatric scientific standpoint, you become. I love how you've just educated yourself so massively. Like, I like. Did you actually go back to school, or did you just just be Mister Sponge and bring get all this? Well, I, I I went into the board's head first, and you know, I I survived, and I built a few businesses, and realized what the hell am I doing? I I need to help people realize how uh, not to break their neck to learn a you know. To, right. to behave better that's all yeah because a well, lot of people misbehave and, and you don't you don't have to break your neck to fix these things right you, you might feel like you're going towards the boards all the time when you jump in the car you want to turn into a, a truck and you know it might, it might feel like that but it's just simply not the case because you're not your thoughts right you're, you're, you're not your thoughts i deal with it all the time i've had well the average down at one every three games stinger or concussion um in my day so you're talking about 100, 150 concussions, plus the motorcycle accident, plus the broken neck. You know, if I, if I don't work on this thing, like it's just, it's just going to go to mush. Right. right. And I work on it. So it's strong. I, I, I track it in, at the University of Montreal on the neural tracker technology. I track at 3.8. Even 18 year old goaltenders playing competitive hockey can't track at that speed. And, and, and when, when you teach the brain how to track in three dimensions, you get cog cognitively smarter. There's a crossover into cognitive ability. So all you really have to do is do eight minutes, eight, eight minutes a week and, and speed up your, your, your brain so you have more spatial capacity and you get cognitively smarter and you get physically younger. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's what's in the cards. So I can show anybody the hand. They just, people don't know what they don't know. They, and, and they see it and they go, well, that can't be true. I'll prove it to me. What does that mean? Well, why don't you try it? You just kick the tires at least, right? Like, look, I came from here, but they don't, right? There's still, a, there's still a large percentage of people that are so fixed on their own, whatever. That's okay. What? Why are we still having to have this conversation? Like that, 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 that I'm stumbled by that. I, you know, I'm stumped by that because I, I mean, I like yourself, I, I, I'm with clients, you know, most weeks and they're, they're going, well, you know, uh, how do you do that? Or how do you get from A to B or like, Oh, that's too much work. Usually ends up. It's too much work. And I think you, uh, you alluded to that earlier. And that I, I, it, they have a perception that it's too much work. It's actually easier. Mm. Right. Good point. It's so simple. Yeah. I mean, the organization works like this belief in self, belief in others and belief in the organization, build those three beliefs and you have a successful business. It's not hard, but people don't do it regularly and they don't hold themselves to account for doing it. So we've been able to really scale the central nervous system into the building of high performance work cultures. And it's a series of gears and, and push pedals. It's not a, it's very, very simple. The, the art, the, the black art uh, re resides in the science, in, in, in the questions that you ask, right? And your interpretation of the answers. So 360s don't work as an example, right? Because they don't work within the human species and within the human brain for, for productivity. They just, it, it's ridiculous. So it has to be anonymous. And so, you know, so there, there's, we've been, we've managed to integrate the ability to look at the central nervous system inside ourselves, which controls us, and then extend it out to, to being able to build an organization where people are happy and healthy, right? And they want to come to work. So it's, it, it's a fascinating thing. But, you know, 
it, it, it's it's the challenge is that we're still driven by you know a capitalistic way of looking at things. Yeah. Well, emotion also plays a serious part in getting in the way, right? I mean, because you can get wrapped up in yourself, right? Yeah, and emotional control was the uh, that was the one I had the most trouble with because I was conditioned from a very young age to lose emotional control. And, you know, I, hey, I, listen, I get two minutes in the penalty box for doing something to somebody you get 15 years in jail for. And then afterwards, I get back to the bench, everybody pat me on the back. Right. Right. So I, I thought losing emotional control was actually a competitive advantage at one time in my life. It, little did I know it was the exact opposite. Yeah. Right? Having emotional control is a competitive advantage, not losing it. And that's one of the behaviors I teach my clients, right? Because, you know, really, there's only three priorities, Peter. There's meeting basic needs, clarity of thought, and helping other people. Those are the only three. If you lose emotional control, you can't serve those three priorities. If you don't have trust, you can't serve those three priorities. So how does trust work? How, do, how does it get built in the brain? How do mirror neurons work? You know, there's only eight behaviors. So if you learn them, you got it. But here's the secret. The big secret and, and, and the thing that people, if they get it, it changes their life. Uh, they might not buy into it at first, but, but let me share with you the four types of trauma, okay? Because there's only four. We think there might be a whole bunch, but they're all symptoms, okay? There, there's four. There's catastrophic physical trauma, and we know when we suffer from it, right? So we do something about it. There's catastrophic emotional trauma. You can't hide it. It's going to burst out, and you, somebody's going to help you, right? So then there's cumulative physical trauma. Well, we deny it sometimes, but if you hit your head with a soccer ball enough, we know that, or, or something else, right? So that that cumulative physical trauma, we could see that one too. But then the, the fourth one is like the ticking time bomb. It's like carbon monoxide to the brain and it's called cumulative emotional trauma. And the only way that we can see it is by using a system to identify it. And if we, if we believe that we can see it, then, then we're believing something that it, it just isn't true. Like there's no science to support it. So what trauma does is it backs you into a jail cell, you know, yourself, you're by yourself and it backs you into a jail cell and it, you close the door and you, you lock it. And then some people even throw the key outside the, and then they go sit in the corner and, and, and they don't understand what's happening to them. It's not their fault. I've been there. I, I, like I've been there. If it wasn't for water running on me, you know, shower, like, I, I probably would have ended my life years ago, right? Water has this calming effect in my life. It just does. So, excellent. That's it. That's uh, wow. I, I'm. You can tell. I'm actually. I'm stuck for how to explain the uh, the feeling I'm getting from the your your story because I can't imagine it. And I think that's really part and parcel of what you know. People like yourself you know, that's how I see your task is like trying to tell as many people as possible so they don't have to experience it themselves, right? Yeah. All you got to do is, so dougsmithperformance.com slash Peter. Okay, so it's slash Peter, Doug Smith Performance. You can post it. And I they will. go there, there's just going to be one button, Thriving in Transition. And they just, just take the book, read it. Look at the pictures of, of what the life was like. I started, believe it or not, I was put into leg braces at age, at age 18 months when I first started walking because of rickets. I was forced gump all the way to the hip. <laughs> and I made it to the NHL by the time I was 18. <laughs> Jeez, you know, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> it's, it's I said old phrase like you were an, you were an accident looking to happen but <laughs> and, then, and then look at this see that see that yeah. picture so there's Gretzky Mesky coffee curry and Fuhrer and, and that's the game winning goal one night in the odd where I got my hand up in the air I'm the only Buffalo saver in the picture and they all signed it because when I went 
when I went back to Buffalo or to Edmonton for the closing of the Northlands, because I was an Edmonton Oiler, I got them all to sign it. I got to sign three copies, one for each of my daughters and one for my dad. So I'm awesome. borrowing this one right now. That's brilliant. <laughs> and then, and then there, right underneath that, I put the the Queen Ju the Queen's Jubilee Award for community service because we've managed to uh, to raise like you know it's got to be hundreds of millions of dollars you know in the in 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 the way that I've been able to you know move in the community because I'm carrying something that's valuable to people and right. there's really no resistance and and so I encourage people to to like I say get the work and, and tell their own story. Like I, it's not about my story, right? I, I just want to motivate people to, to tell their own story. And, and, and I, I'm happy to help them because the more people that get it out of them, the, the healthier we all are, right? Because people will see it and identify with it. So, so for sure. I absolutely love that. You know, uh, You've got to start somewhere, like you said. You know, press the damn button, right? Like, I, I, <laughs> press the button. Yeah, press, press the button. button. But we like, go ahead. Sorry, I, I said. Regardless, I, I'm always talking to I'm always talking to people that'll listen anyway about getting out of their own way because it they are the only people that are stopping themselves. It's not, it's not you or I. We're putting. I mean, you're putting it out there. You're putting it out there. It's free. You've unlocked it already. There's no key. There's no dollar. You just like actually take it from me, right? <laughs> when I when I hit the boards, here's what happened to me essentially. This this is the key second. When I hit the boards going 25 miles an hour, right? Head first, pile driver, shattered C5 and 6 in hundreds of places, landed on the on the ice with my head on my hands, torn ligaments in the back of my neck conscious I didn't see all the big goals that I had scored during that time I, I didn't I didn't see all the magnificent things that people had said about me what I saw was all the times that I had not shown up that I had not helped somebody when I, I had the opportunity to do it or when I had been mean to somebody or hurt somebody that's all I saw during that two, three, four second period of time where it was white light in my eyes, nothing but white light, that's what I saw. I could flip through it very clearly my whole life, but I stopped it at all the places where shit, I, you know, I, I need to go back. And so I spent the first six years, seven years going back to all the, the cities where I played in the NHL and finding the guys that, that I that I had wronged or done something to and apologized to them, including including people like Scotty Bowman, right, who I played with for three years. You know, I never thanked people when I was there because I was drafted so young. What was I supposed to think? Everybody just wanted me, right? And nobody sat me down at that time. There was no coaches. There wasn't there wasn't five guys surrounding Connor McDavid because that's who I was in L.A. by myself, living at the Airport Park Hotel in Inglewood, California, for. Two months by myself, no, nobody to look out for me. I, I could have died three or four times be before I got to Christmas, my first year in, in L.A. It was crazy. I, I, was, I was picking up hitchhikers in L.A. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right? And nobody, nobody there to say, well, you know, come on over here. I got to help you out a little bit. It was more like I'd go to the dressing room and every day get threatened by one of the guys who – whose job I was going to take or, you know what I mean? It was, right. it, was, it was bad news. It was really bad news back then. The echo, the echo of that story just goes in and out and it's stuck in my head. Now I'm telling you, I like it. It's it freaking me out actually, because I look back at my own youth and I think, I was a miserable, a miserable bugger, you know, when I was, I, I was, I was um, an executive for a retail organization and I was traveling across Canada as a young 30 year old. Right. And my goals were achieved, but I achieved them by stepping on other people's goals mm. and walking over them mm. instead of doing it together. Like, I thought the import 
I was never taught any different. Just like you, you know, just like you started out yeah. hockey. I was yeah. never taught any different. Nobody well, ever rewards. They gave you rewards. They patted they you on the back. They did. They gave me money. They gave yeah. me awards. They gave me trips. Yeah. You know, like, it's, uh, all it did was bring on another beast in me. Sure. Right. Sure. I mean, that's got to change. Right. And, and I, and I realized five years into that, I was losing friends. Right. I, I, I was like, I was not making any personal headway. Mm -hmm. I was making great business headway and mm -hmm. other people were gaining, you know, lots of dollars and everything off it, but I was losing myself and I just made a, a conscious decision about five years into that systematic thing that I was caught up in. And I just said, maybe that was my own act of rolling into the boards. Cause I got this big rude awakening yes, that yes, said, yes. you know, bang, Mm -hmm. What am I doing here? Like the change, the change moment, the change. Right. Second. <laughs> I did. I you know, did. There's, there, there's a huge need right now. Uh, and if you are listening to this and you're 55 plus and you're thinking, you know, I, 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 I got to do something. I got to get it out because this stuff happened and I got to share it with my family before I go. I could do it for them in six months. Like I, I can get the process done in six months. And it, it, it's surprisingly simple because I did it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it had to be simple for me to do it because <laughs> I'm always looking for a shortcut to the net. You know, it's like <laughs> uh, there are no shortcuts in life, though. Right. I mean, no, the, no, no the, it, I fooled myself. I, I thought I'd have the book done and, you know, so it, it the, the whole process has taken a long time. But but what's happened, Peter, is I've, I've found um, I found a home. In, in, in learning about and helping other people who want to learn about, you know, how this thing above the neck functions so that we don't pin ourselves, get put in a situation where, you know, it feels like we're running into the boards every single day because it's a terrible feeling. You don't have to go through that. It's not necessary. There's a recipe, a simple recipe that you could take and use. So get, get thriving in transition, plug into, uh, dougsmithperformance.com wherever you can and then talk to me and we'll like we'll figure it out you know and if 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 they need branding like we're working together now so. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i love this man like i really the collaboration I, I you're so in tune with what i do like that's what I, and 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 i'm after hearing you now speak and uh, letting me know how simple it is right because everybody thinks that science has to be layered, right? And that you <laughs> publishing companies love it to be complicated. I couldn't even like it was crazy. The whole process of talking to publishing companies was cuckoo. And and so I started a publishing company. You know, I did I it, it, I have the people, a small team of people that go, boom, publishing company. Right. Right. And, and we have another project we're working on that goes, boom, not for profit organization for anybody who is a veteran in the Canadian Armed Forces. Awesome. Boom. Done. Everything done for them. All filled out, all the paperwork. They get out of the, the Armed Forces. They have a not for profit organization to get their life going, to start something else, to do something with their life. And that's happening through veteranshouse.ca. And so I'm very excited. Like Stephen Beardwood's doing an amazing problem, a former medic with the Canadian Armed Forces, but a survivor of mefloquine, right? So like he, he's just a brilliant guy who, who, who needs a shout out. And, and everybody that needs help getting a, a company started or not-for-profit started, you know, we want to expand it so that for a small donation, like we'll just give you all the paperwork so you don't have to get all flustered. You know, I get flustered with paperwork. I think we all do, right? I do. I hate yeah. the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, so we just we just put it in a turnkey. You get the files, you put your name on it, send it in, and bingo, bango, there you go. I can't believe how you just franchised uh, your your life in a sense. You're like, and you're mending of your ways, like, like, oh my. Well, God. you're gonna see it all fits in as soon as you come into the network of finding a better path. Right. All this other stuff comes with it. <laughs> 
because the path is very comp. I mean, it's 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 complex. It's not complicated, but it's complex. Right. So be careful opening up that door. I mean, everybody wants you know to be a star, but there's a lot of stuff that comes with that that you got to be aware of. Did it help? It. Yeah. I I like I survived. Right. Yeah. Unlikely survival of five years in Los Angeles in the jungle by myself. No mother or father. I played there for five years, right? And at a time when, when you know, the movie Blow was in 1978. I arrived in LA in 1981. the the entire The entire shipment from South America to Can to 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 the United States shifted from Florida to San Pedro in Los Angeles, which you know. So that that was the big sort of movement of cocaine in, in, into Southern California. So, uh, you know, on the team at that time, you know, it was running rampant, like the virus through, through, through the team for, for the entire time I played there. Cause people would arrive there all hyped to, to play for the Kings and everything, but, but then they dive into the, to the fun stuff, you know, and, and uh, a lot of them getting there at the end of their career. Uh, it, it was really uh it was really an amazing place. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Like, I don't want yeah. to talk negatively about any yeah. players, but, but it was really, really uh, badly managed at that time. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, you know what? It's, it, it's, it's better now. Uh, the, the holes are being plugged. So, you know, I, I just, I'm looking onward and upward and the data is, you know, the data is not showing us any depression in the marketplace right now, any elevated depression, because people have been trying to save their life. And you, you don't get depressed when you're trying to save your life. But based on the aftermath of 9-11 and other global incidences, the rise in depression is going to be remarkable, right. like, like so big. And so, you know, if you're feeling something and you're not sure whether you should be feeling it or not, the answer is probably yes. Um, get help. If it's really bad, dial 911. But do the thing you got to do to get over the mountain right now. Don't call it quits just yet. I'm looking forward to you uh, speaking at Careering Up. Uh, what, day are you, what day are you scheduled? Uh, June 16th, June 16th. I'm going to lay out the model. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be giving more details on the course and stuff. I mean, yeah. for today, you know, it was great talking about the book and great getting to know you better. I mean, it's been fantastic. Thank you. My pleasure. I, I, listen, I, I could tell you were you were highly responsive you were very giving and I could tell already that it was going to be a great conversation. I just knew out of the gate because you're, you are responsive. And I think that's something people need to learn too, right? Like they not, don't like, if you feel something like get at it, like, and go do it. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't let the, the environment dictate whether you do or whether you don't. Right. Just exactly. go ahead. You have, you have permission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't wait for someone else to give it to you. Right? You got permission today from Doug Smith. <laughs> Thanks very much, Peter. It's been friend. wonderful talking to you. And I'm gonna I'm let's do it again. Let, let, let's do it again. We'll do it again later. And absolutely, and I'll, I'll give people what they want. Get get them to the to the place where they can take a, take a look at the at thriving in transition. And then I'll come back and I'll give them what's in the second book that lines up perfectly with Thriving in Transition, okay? So I, I'm looking great. forward to it. You're a very, very good interviewer. L love it. Never felt more comfortable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day, my friend. Bye now. Bye for now. This conversation brought a new perspective to my own early business days. I now understand what I went through. This is possibly my most favorite interview of all the podcasts I've done so far. I hope you'll connect with Doug and see for yourself what a great guy he is. Thanks for listening.